Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors at Blue Chew. If you are struggling in the bedroom, give Blue Chew a try. They can reinstill confidence in your intimate abilities. Go to bluechew.com and use code Holly to try it for free. Just pay $5 in shipping. Okay, so my guest today is Rachel Cavalli. She's got a list of credits, nominations, and wins a mile long. She is an Australian and New Zealand Playboy Playmate and the Urban X MILF of the Year. Let's give her a big welcome. Hi, Rachel. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. good. So, um, you know, let's start kind of where we always start. Uh, how did you get into the adult industry? Well, I came to L.A. to uh, be an actress for mainstream, and that is very hard to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started Where were you from originally? Indiana. Okay. Yeah. So that was huge. Um, I started off doing extra work, and it was like on set all day for like 150, maybe 200 if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, this isn't working. So a friend was like, you know, you should do porn. And then it just so happened that an agency had hit me up on Twitter and asked if I'd like to do porn. And I was like, oh, why not? I mean, I thought about it when I was younger, so. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty big leap to make, though, right? Mm -hmm. Like, to get into the porn industry. So what was your thought process <clears throat> getting into it? Like, did you kind of weigh the pros and cons? Or were you in a place where you're like, um, I cannot pay my rent. I'm just going to give this a shot yeah, and see that's how I kinda, feel. Yeah, that's kind of where I was. Um, like, I have kids. so And I came out here. My parents thought I was crazy for doing what I was doing. And I was like, I'm not letting anyone down. I didn't want to let my kids down. And I didn't want to, you know, have my parents be right. <laughs> so I was we like, hate that. I am not going home. Like yeah. somebody's going to take me. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, tell us about like, so did you go meet with the agency before you took a scene or do you just talk to them on the phone? And then you I talked to them on the phone a little and then I went there to the office. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually flew me in and uh, cause I had went back home and I, came back so did you go back home like to visit yeah okay. to visit gotcha. and because i didn't want them to know i was just trying I'm like oh you know yeah I'm, I get more work i'm going out there for you know yeah they had no clue so uh when i came back they had somebody pick me up from the airport which was something out of a movie literally because mm -hmm. the guy was like in this terrible beat up car and it barely ran i don't know how he got me <laughs> <laughs> what color, wait, what color was the car? It was like a, a grayish, like, it was very rusty. So it was like, okay, I, it I was may have been like gray. Because I know, but... I remember one of the drivers for one of the agencies who had a very beat up car. Oh, that every time rough. he'd show up with the girls, I'd be like, but uh, it was red, I think. So I was just trying to see if it, I was thinking of the right person. Yeah. And he, uh, he, I guess he used to work in the industry and he looked like he was stuck in the 80s. And... <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? I just remember the ride there was very long. And I was like, am I making the right decision? Am I, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then when I got there, it was like this small office. And they gave me all this paperwork that, of course, I didn't read. And I just signed and just rolled with it. Right. Yeah. Wow. It's like, what are you going to do? Call back home. Be like, mom, can you yeah. <laughs> go over this contract for me? So, me? mom, I am thinking about getting into porn. Yeah. Can you read this contract for me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lost it yeah so okay so you got your first scene booking so tell us what that was that like. was on a whim I like the girl had canceled that morning and so my agent threw me in uh luckily it was with Jesse Jones okay so he was a great that performer. was cool. yeah he yeah. is he's awesome and all he was worried about was getting a picking up a Christmas gift for his girlfriend so he was like on a schedule <laughs> it was like we got to do this now and I was just like so I wasn't nervous it like kind of helped with that. Did it help, like, in the sense that okay, this has has a girlfriend and he cares yeah. enough about her about getting a Christmas gift, or like I think all everything and or the fact that he was like, this is a job, this yeah. is professional, I exactly. want to do this, I want to go home, just everything, yeah, yeah. just and and they the director and then they're they're very laid back, very cool with everything, so mm -hmm. I'm just like okay, they're not even worried about me. This like my first day, I have no clue what I'm doing, yeah, and he just took control, yeah, you know, so. 
It worked. That's the great Thank thing. Goodness. Yeah, that's the great thing yeah. about. That's why experienced male performers are so important. They are because, especially working with new girls, they'll mm-hmm. just like take you, throw you around, do all yeah. the positions. Um, that's you know why I I kind of always advocate for how important the male talent is because they just like they can make a break a scene. Oh, they can. For yeah, sure. What company was it for? Do you remember? Uh, I know Just Dave was the. I want to say Wanks. Was that Wanks maybe or something or like, isn't there Wanks VR or it wasn't it just... VR though? I don't know. It was. It's an older company. I don't even know if they still shoot. To be honest, yeah, yeah. a lot of companies have died. Yeah. How? When was this? Do you remember the year? Mm, Two thousand sixteen or seventeen. Yeah, maybe? that was what seven years ago. Yeah, because it'll be seven years in December. Wow. Yeah. One anniversary. Yeah. Seven years. That's crazy. Time flies. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so after that scene, <clears throat> like, you go home. How are you feeling about it? Are you? I felt great. Okay. I mean, I got, I was, had my makeup done and everything, and it was still on when I got done. <laughs> and it went really fast, and I got a paycheck, and I was like, wow, like, it's the biggest paycheck I've ever gotten. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. So it was cool. It was actually kind of, I feel like, a confidence booster. Okay. In yeah. Like, what sense? Um, just, I felt pretty. Mm-hmm. I felt like, you know, everybody was really cool on set, and... You know, it was like work, and then you get a paycheck that big. I was like, okay, like I don't need anybody. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's cool. And then, what? How long was it until your next scene? Do you remember? Maybe like less than a week. Okay. Yeah. And then, do you remember what your next scene was like? I don't. After that. But did you? Know. So was each scene afterwards kind of similar? Like, I guess you what know I'm what the do. next one actually I do remember it was the casting couch. Ah. Uh, the casting couch. Good old scene. casting couch. And that was crazy because I I don't know if we should talk about this but like girls do different things on set to get ready for, mm-hmm. and it was that time of the month mm-hmm. and they were like I was like oh I can't shoot and they're like why and I'm like because it's that time and they're like you put a sponge in. I'm like what yeah <laughs> I was just like what are you talking about yeah so that was another new experience yeah that's yeah. always fun the first time you do a scene on your period oh god yeah yeah so that for those of you who have not experienced this, and I believe, I just want to preface this by saying I am not suggesting that one does this. I am not a medical doctor. I am not saying it's safe or wise. But in the industry, often what girls do is they will put a sponge, usually like a makeup wedge, yeah, right? Yeah, makeup sponge. Makeup sponge up your vagina, which will soak up all the blood, and then you will do a scene. Yay. And then you will pull it out afterwards. And um, it generally works pretty well. Yeah. Um, sometimes people <clears throat> have difficulty in getting it out afterwards. I've yes. had to help girls pull sponges out before. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but, um, you know, for the most part, it, it works for some people. I know some people have had issues with it. So mm-hmm. that's how, that's how you ha- do a porn scene on your period. Yeah. Cause I mean, imagine if you had to cancel every scene. Oh my god. Cause you're on your period, especially if you weren't regular, oh, like people would be furious. Yeah, yeah, because it takes a lot to set up a scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And unfortunately, we get these stupid things like once a fucking month. I know, right? You know, so there's like a quarter of like your time that you have to like, you can't work. Yeah, this sucks. So moving forward, were all of your scenes like pretty, like was there a scene that you, or an experience that you had that made you kind of rethink your entrance into porn or... Was it all pretty smooth for you? No, you know, it's been pretty smooth for me. Like overall? Yeah, overall. That's great. Yeah. I haven't had like really any kind of issues with directors, with like people I've worked with. Like it's been pretty good. Do you think that that's luck or do you think that you just know how to establish your boundaries or maybe your agent picked good companies for you to work for? I think establishing your boundaries is huge. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that is something that I know a lot of people struggle with. Yeah. How old were you when you got into the industry? I was older. I was like 31 or 32 when I first came out. Do you think that that helped you? I do. Yeah, I think if I was in my 20s, I probably would have been dead. (laughs) (laughs) I would have partied too hard and blew all my money. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people that suggest that 18 is too young to get into porn. What do you think? You know, it could be. It could be. Because I think that 
you don't start really thinking about things until you're like 25 and up, I feel mm-hmm. like, you know? Yeah. And I think that's about the time that your prefrontal cortex is fully developed. Really? So I think it's around 25. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know. Before that, it's like you're just kind of on a whim, like, you know? Yeah. Just out here. Yeah. Experiencing new things. Yeah. And porn is one of those things that you can't take (laughs) back and that can haunt you you forever. Yeah. Do you experience stigma from working in the adult industry in your day-to-day life? You know, I haven't really. I feel like if you give attention to it, you do. Mm -hmm. Um, Back home at first, like, I lost – two of my best friends we were friends through middle school and high school and we don't speak anymore so that was hard for me did they directly tell you that it was because of porn or did they just no i actually heard from other people they're like i can't believe she would do that she has kids and like what is what's wrong with her like Mm -hmm. what is happening you know it's kind of i think they thought i was having like some kind of crisis (laughs) yeah you know but i was just like okay well you know, but I, I like again. <clears throat> I feel like if you give attention to stump something, then it it starts getting bigger and balling up, and mm-hmm. you know. So I try not to do that, and yeah. I've been very lucky with that. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they say you know, there's that saying that like the things that you pay attention to and put energy into are the things that grow. Mm-hmm. So if it's negative, mm-hmm. then it grows. If it's positive, then it yeah. grows. And I've spoken to so many different people on this show who you know, the stigma and the backlash of working in the adult industry has, you know, overwhelmed Mm -hmm. them in numerous ways and has really, like, been damaging for their life and other people who it hasn't so much. And I've always kind of wondered, like, how does that work? Why did this person do so well? And then maybe even transition out of the adult industry Mm -hmm. into something else and and not have that stigma follow them in a way that prevented them from – Right, you know, expanding into other areas and why other people like have just gotten stuck in, in yeah. the cycle and in, in in an industry that they just didn't want to do anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah, how did your family feel <clears throat> about it when they found out? They actually found out. I had a sugar daddy at the time. Mm. <laughs> he uh, when he found out, he told everyone. He told everyone (laughs) from the father to my kids to my parents to um and my dentist so this Um, was a sugar daddy (laughs) yeah this is a sugar daddy that you didn't get from porn no i didn't this was somebody prior and this was probably somebody who was from back home uh he was yes i met him back home and then he had moved to back to his hometown which was the east coast okay and so we were doing long distance relationship at the time okay Mm mm-hmm and so then he found out, obviously, mm-hmm. he felt betrayed in some way. He did. He, he was upset because I didn't tell him first. Right. So, you know. And then he told your family. How mm-hmm. did they react? Uh, I think my parents didn't really believe it at first. Mm-hmm. And then they called me and they were like, is this true? And I'm like, yeah. It was kind of like easier that somebody else had told them because I didn't know how I was going to tell them. I kept telling them that I was working for like a modeling agency and that, you know, I was doing the acting on the side. And I mean, they kept asking, where are you going to be in? Where are you going to be at? And I was like, <laughs> oh, it's just this commercial. It's like background. <laughs> like, you know, it was bad. So. Yeah. I mean, you are acting and modeling. It's just mm-hmm. kind of lying by omission. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, what about what about your kids? How old were they when you got into the industry? They were a little bit younger. Um, my oldest was, I want to say, 14 at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, his friends actually knew. Mm-hmm. And I think that he kind of knew, but he didn't. He kept saying it wasn't my mom. And then I was just honest with them. And, you know, they've done pretty well Mm -hmm. now that we've talked about it i feel like you should definitely do that if you have kids talk about it so they know how to react towards kids because again if you give energy to something it you know if they see that that affects them and they want to pick on them then it gets the problem gets bigger right so now that they don't you know they know and they know how to handle it they don't talk about it with their friends their friends you know don't ask now they don't know i mean people back home obviously do but now that they're here and in school and stuff nobody knows Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah (laughs) that you know yeah um was that a hard conversation kind of my youngest are girls and they didn't really understand Mm -hmm. they were yeah until they probably got a little like three years down the road i'd say Mm -hmm. how old were they at the time 
shoot, my youngest was maybe six, yeah, five or six. Because it's yeah. like one of those things. I've had this conversation with so many other um, sex workers who are parents, like mm-hmm. the age appropriate <clears throat> way to tell your kids. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you tell them? Right. Um, obviously, when they're very young, they don't know what adult entertainment is. Right. Um, I mean, you probably know that my parents were pornographers no, I when don't. I was growing up. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I grew up like, so this is something I have experience oh, with. Okay. My my mom and my dad and that picture frame right next to you. Aww. Um, yeah, they were, uh, my mom was one of like the first female erotic photographers. Wow. So she worked for Playboy, Hustler, Penthouse, like all that stuff. Super cool. So, and my dad helped her run the business. So my That's parents awesome. were in porn like before I was even born. I'm the oldest. Wow. So, you know, I always get that question, like, what was it like to grow yeah. up, you know, with parents who were in porn? And, you know, it was, for me, it was, it didn't bother me at all. Uh-huh. I mean, obviously, here I am. Right. <laughs> here I am now. Right. Um, but, you know, because that wasn't something that, as a kid, I didn't really understand what it was. And right. I remember, I think, the first way that my parents explained to it was they said, mommy and daddy make movies mm-hmm. and take pictures for grown-ups. Yeah. And you're not a grown-up. And that was, like, the extent of all I knew. And, um, you know, the back office was off limits to me. And mm-hmm. I didn't really question it that much. And then eventually, yeah. like, I figured it out. But I don't remember, like, this moment of being like, oh, this is what it is. Yeah. It just kind of... I don't know. It's it's like normalcy is relative, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel too. Yeah, just, like I had a very normal childhood. Yeah. My parents yeah. were wonderful to me. They were there for me. They were mm-hmm. present. They loved me. They supported mm-hmm. me. Um, they encouraged me. They, you know, like put me in extracurricular activities mm-hmm. and like I did cotillion, which is hilarious. <laughs> um, so you know, it wasn't like a big thing for me. And I definitely like you know, had those issues at school where kids made fun of me or they knew about it, but it didn't affect me like in a, in a big way. And I've talked to other people who've had similar experiences, but their parents hid it from them and lied to them for a very long time. And then they found out in a really like traumatizing way. And that's what I was afraid of. Damaging. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it could be. Yeah. It's, it's like you're con- lying, you know. You've been lying to me this whole time. Like, who are you? <laughs> you but know? it's hard, right? It's such a hard conversation to have. Yeah. Because you're not doing anything illegal. No. Nope. Right? And you're making good money and you're mm-hmm. providing for your family and you're being safe. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's such a stigma around it. Yeah. It's, and it's, you know, a profession that's not appropriate for children. So how do you explain to your children that it's right. something that you do? It is It is tricky. Definitely. Yeah. What advice would you give to other parents who are like maybe in a similar situation now and don't know how to tell their kids or when to tell their kids? I mean, it's definitely it, timing is probably everything. Like I said, if if he hadn't told him, I don't even know how I would have told him. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely should do like a one on one talk at some point. So, yeah, even if you're just like, you don't tell him you're having sex, like you're acting in, you know, adult movies that, mm-hmm. you know. You know, something to let them. It's hard. Do you wish that there was some kind of like literacy or like knowledge, foundation of knowledge out there that parents like you could access to figure out how to have this conversation with their kids? Because there really isn't. There isn't. And then, and like you said, so many people like judge you for it and Mm -hmm. put it out there such a bad thing that they don't know. Yeah. Like, wait, what? You know? Yeah. What I've found interesting since the you know since the internet and Mm -hmm. you know how it's taken over everything and Mm -hmm. all the kids are on it and kids accessing you know um adult content when they're underage there's been some like porn literacy uh organizations that have popped up and there was one woman that i interviewed in particular called justine angfonte and she actually does porn literacy for kids and when i say kids i mean like high school age um and it was really interesting because obviously she's not like showing them porn like she's not engaging in anything like illegal like she does this at schools um if the parents give permission for her to do so but she you know teaches kind of kids i think about the context of adult adult entertainment Mm -hmm. um in a way that is appropriate to them and that they like kind of understand at their age and it's such like a tricky such tricky waters to navigate Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm always admiring people who are, like, trying to find a solution to talking to kids about this kind of stuff yeah, rather definitely. than just pretending it doesn't exist or right. just wanting to have the entire porn industry shut down because that's just, like, not yeah. happening. Yeah. Worst obviously. case scenario, it's getting 
bigger. you know, pushed underground. <laughs> And like, then it's or illegal. Underground, but yeah. bigger. Yeah. It's right. kind of crazy. Yeah. So it's like trying to address, you know, the issue like in a responsible way. And it's like, yeah, it's a tough, controversial it topic. Definitely is. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll be right back. So hang tight. We'll see you in a sec. This episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Blue Chew. Sometimes life gets stressful and that can affect us in so many different ways, even our performance in the bedroom. Or maybe you're dating someone new and you're ready to go all the way and you wanna make sure that you come out of the gate strong. Whatever your reasons are, Blue Chew can help you keep your erections going stronger for longer. This is an online service where you can consult with a licensed medical provider privately online. No visits to the doctor's office, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. They ship directly and discreetly to your door for much cheaper than you'd get from your doctor's prescription. With the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form, Blue Chew could be the answer to your performance anxiety. So check out Blue Chew today with this amazing offer exclusively for my listeners. Try it for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY, all one word, to receive your first month for free. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Okay, so Rachel, um, you are known known for doing MILF scenes. Big yeah. surprise, right? <laughs> That's just like, it's all like teen or MILF out there. There's no like in between anymore. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of performers that I've talked to have mixed feelings about it. Um, you know, the step porn genre and all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Are, what are your thoughts on it, if any? Um, you know, of course I'd want to do like just regular boy girl with like another hot performer my age, mm -hmm. you know, more often that's fun, you know, and not in mom wear, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, I feel like it's just acting to yeah. me, you know, like <clears throat> obviously we're not doing this at home Well, I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's acting. Yeah. I, I come to work, I'm mommy, I leave and it's off, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. don't think about it get a script and do it and get it over with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like you come, you come to work addressing it as work. Yes. You're like, this is what's been assigned 100%. to me. I'm going to do this to the best of my abilities. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go home to my regular life. 100%. But you find that more and more these days, even older guys, like they have a lot of, I don't know whether it's a mommy issue from home. I don't mm -hmm. know. Or if they were just like a mama's boy or, whatever the case may be, but even when they're older, they still like that mommy, you know, that nurturing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. That's what we're doing in a way. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it is kind of sad that like, I think it probably speaks to like a bigger issue of, you know, men not feeling like they're getting that kind of nurturing attention. Maybe mm -hmm. they missed it when they Maybe. were a child and, I mean, I'm not getting it from their wife or with their, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever's happening. It's well, becoming bigger. <laughs> right. And also too, yeah. it's interesting because usually kinks are like undisclosed desires, right. Mm -hmm. That are like deep mm -hmm. inside you that come yeah. out in a sexual way. So, sure. and you know, men are often conditioned to be tough and they don't need anything and they yeah. don't need hugs and they don't need like a shoulder to cry on. And right. so maybe that, that desire, which I think all human beings have yeah. comes out like in that, in that kink play. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Is there something nice about that? That the feeling like you can kind of be that nurturing someone so, for maybe. somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Do you get a lot of that like on your OnlyFans? Yes. It's pretty much all I get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And guys that I meet even though that are just like trying to go out, they're kind of like that. I mean, some of them, most of them. <laughs> you know maybe you just have a kind of like approachable personality that makes people feel like yeah you could warm like makes people feel loved yeah maybe <laughs> i'm okay thing. with it i'm okay with it yeah. yeah it doesn't bother me you can give me all the mommy scenes whatever <laughs> <laughs> um do you prefer doing scenes with scene partners who are younger or do you prefer doing ones closer to your age or does it not really matter honestly age isn't really a thing for me uh, I feel like the chemistry that I have with somebody or, you know, personalities attracts me mm -hmm. more than anything else. So, so you don't ever get like creeped <clears throat> out if you're put with someone who's, cause I've talked to other like, you know, MILF performers mm -hmm. who will get 
cast with like 18 year olds, 18 yeah. year old girls or boys. And then they're just like, Ugh. like they just feel weird about it. Only one time. And mm. it was a girl actually. And then the only reason why is because I felt like she was a lot similar to my daughter mm -hmm. and she had lots of they, they had just tons of similar and the way she talked on set and everything. And I was just like, okay, this is kind of weird. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But then after that, again, it's just like you leave and you're like, whatever. Yeah. But yes. So yeah. I can Surprisingly, the guys doesn't, you know, it doesn't really. Right. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. What are your favorite actual types of scenes to shoot? Like given a choice. Um, I like, believe it or not cream pies <laughs> really I do. why is that i don't know i just like the feeling i like okay. the way it feels and i like afterwards i'm like oh, i feel nasty like yeah i've been bad <laughs> <laughs> so it just kind of turns me on i guess <laughs> that i mean that that's yeah. funny because of course <laughs> for me instantly i think oh it's because they don't come on your face and therefore you don't have yeah. to wash your face afterwards you don't have come in your hair you can go home that's with true. your makeup still on that's like true that's true <laughs> the eye oh my god it's the worst <laughs> oh my god how many times have you gotten come in your eye oh set? god lots Lots. Yeah, it's so painful. It's terrible. And I, I wear contacts, so it's like 10 times worse. Same. Yeah, it's like, ugh. Yeah. You know what's funny is I had um, Charlie Ford on, and she was talking about a scene that she did where the guy came in her eyeball, like, on purpose. Uh -huh. And she was, like, into it. They, she, it was probably the same scene that we did because she got come in her eye that day. It was, like, five of us. Was most. it for Pat Mine? She said no. that she was shooting for Pat Mine, but it was like, but she it wasn't liked it. She yes. got it in her eye and she liked it. Yes. We were just like, is she crazy? <laughs> like, what is she? But she was cool with it. And her freaking eyes were, they looked awful. They looked like somebody just threw acid in her eyes. They were like, <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but so yeah, you're right. She, she liked it. Yeah, she did a scene. It's crazy. Oh, I can't remember who the male performer was, but he was like, I want to come in your eyeball. And she was like, awesome. And she like did it. And I was like, <laughs> she told me the story. I was like, what and she was like yeah she was into it and that's what i love about charlie because she's such a sweet looking innocent yeah. like really intelligent she, yeah, i don't know she's, she's just not i don't look at charlie and think like this girl likes coming her eyeballs yeah no not at all <laughs> but me either but that's also like what i, I think love she's gonna be as wild as she was either. right she was very yeah 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 but i i actually that's what i, I love that about people when like mm -hmm. they're the unexpectedness yeah like that to me is i think that's so great yeah so that's, that's cool. We're just saying, Charlie, we love you. <laughs> yeah. And we wish you many You're the more. the only person I know that likes come in the <laughs> eye. <laughs> we wish you all the come in right. your eye <laughs> in your future endeavors. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. So uh, you didn't do anal scenes for your first couple of years. I still haven't. You still no, haven't? No, I haven't done my anal scene yet. Are you considering it? I am considering it, mm -hmm. but I've been practicing. It's taken me quite a while to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Are you just feeling like it's just not a comfortable thing for you? Um. So I did it like in my – my life, you know, before I had surgery, and I had surgery because obviously I've had four kids, mm -hmm. and I had them all natural, and TMI, but um, I got my butthole reconstructed, mm. <laughs> for those who that want to know. <laughs> no, it's so and, interesting. Um, um, I've heard about this, yeah. actually. And it hurt really bad to get done, and I was on set, and the guy was fucking me doggy, and he slipped, and it went in, and it hurt even worse and so i had to go back to the doctor and he just stitched it up right there <laughs> and yes so they, wait, needless hold to say wait, hold, hold on. did they give you like did they give you, they gave you a shot there right. but you don't feel it at the moment but let me tell you like an hour and a half later you feel it <laughs> so there's that and then also like you could probably like put my pinky in there and that was for like the first couple years after the surgery. Really? Yeah. So it's taken me almost a year and a half now to wow. actually even get it to start opening up because it was so tight that it's like, oh, it yeah. Was, it hurt. Wow. Yeah. So now it's starting to. It's starting to like feel. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess essentially start, like the butthole's a, a muscle, better. right? Yeah. So do you yeah, think that? For sure. That's, I mean, that's almost like a mental thing. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. But it really was. It's so tight. <laughs> like, uh. How long after your surgery did this guy accidentally slip it in? 
maybe eight months, maybe not even that. Maybe it could have been six months. But still, like you probably felt mm -hmm. like pretty safe to go back to work. Like how long did they tell you it was uh, to heal? I, they told me to wait like a good two to three weeks after I had it stitched up again. But uh, I was probably back on set like the week after. Wow. And it didn't hurt, but it's it scares me because like in certain positions, I'm always thinking about that happening yeah. again. Uh, but that's another reason why I kept practicing trying to get you know, so if it yeah. does, then it's not as bad. But now it's starting to work out. So okay, I'm like on th the I guess three stage three of the set that you're. <laughs> you're talking like the butt plexus yes. slowly yeah. gets bigger. Yeah. So now we're on that. And How many stages are there? There's five. There's five. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're almost there. So you're on number three. I'm not gonna be able to take dread stick, but you know. I mean, <laughs> few people can take dread stick, yeah. even in their vagina. Yeah. So. Um, there's that. <laughs> do you have a couple of performers in mind that you would like to do this first anal scene with? Uh, somebody uncircumcised. I've okay. determined that much. So yes. that is so interesting. I've heard that from several people that mm -hmm. uncircumcised penises are better I for anal. So. Um, do you do you know why? I think it's because I feel like, and I don't know, but um, the skin there's that going in first before the actual head and mm -hmm. so it's kind of slowly mm -hmm. maybe that's the only thing i can think of but it feels softer at the top yeah than just you know that hard <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean just the hard so, bulb so yeah like they're a little bit so maybe softer. that's it yeah yeah that you're not you're not the first person that has yeah. said that and so for all of you guys who have asked me if it's okay to have an uncircumcised penis there is your answer you are more preferred for anal so yeah. congratulations on circumcised men of the world right <laughs> <laughs> so um do you have any public uh sex stories at all and if not do you have any public places that you would love to have sex in that's um, like on your bucket list yeah i'm in spain for some reason you I had want, sex in public. No, in Spain. I want to. You That's want like to on in my Spain. bucket list. Okay. Yeah. Have you been to Spain before? I haven't. I want to do it for my birthday this year because it's a big one, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would like to do that for my birthday. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe I can find something like a one night stand there for all you Spanish guys. <laughs> all right, Spain, you know, get ready. Look, right? <laughs> Is it just because you want to go to Spain? Or? I, I just think like the whole thing, like, I don't know, Spanish guys are hot to me. Yeah. And like, I like the accent. Uh -huh. I like to be talked to in a different language. Actually, it doesn't really matter what language. I just like dirty talk, yeah. you know, that way. Um, but just like I've seen pictures of places and videos from other girls that posted stuff, and I'm like, oh, my God, could not imagine having sex in certain spots there. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, But you're thinking of somewhere with, like, a view. Yeah. You know, a not, view. not like a back alley. Or even, of well, no, even like some of like the alleys, like the old alleyways, you know, that mm -hmm. are all cool and yeah. pretty, you know? Okay. That could be fun. Yeah. Sneaky. All right. I'm going to manifest that for you. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any like crazy sex stories at all, even from set or just from your personal life? I get asked this question all the time, and I've always, I can't ever think in, you know, like, before porn was in the back of a truck bed, somebody was driving it around in the country while we were fucking in the back. That was pretty cool. Were they <laughs> driving slow? I hope they were driving slow. They were driving, I, honestly, I can't remember, but. <laughs> were there, there couldn't have been a lot of stop signs. No, it was in the country. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that was cool. They were on a paved road, right? Uh yeah, pay for yeah. I'm like I was like, wait a second. Like, yeah, we were on the pay logistical road, yes. issues that would come with that. <laughs> yeah, um, on the beach, on Venice Beach. Um, I will say, like for me, you know, sex on the beach is something that people romanticize a lot. Yeah, um, it's not as fun as you think it's it gonna is be. Absolutely not. You sink in the sand, mm -hmm. sand <laughs> and gets then when in you get vagina. up, you have it everywhere. Vagina, yeah, for yeah. days, not just like. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Yeah, I remember it's it was not like as sexy as you think. <laughs> right, I remember it was my dream to always shoot on a beach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ever since I started shooting, and it, it was you know I was like twenty years into my career or eighteen years into my career before I shot on a beach, mm -hmm. and it was <laughs> a nightmare. Was, yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm it sure. was. I mean, it was a solo for Playboy too, so it oh, wasn't wow. even like a sex scene, but it was like it was hot. Oh. It was windy. Oh, um, wow. It was really hard for me to see. 
the back of my camera, uh, uh, the sand and everywhere. The girl got stung by a sand wasp. Oh no, <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> it was oh it was but you know i will say it was chloe teray who's like one of the toughest models i know and um she did she did really well with it oh, but uh good. yeah that was that was whoosh, yeah i'm rough. sure <laughs> <laughs> um so how do you balance your uh family life with the adult industry uh it's very hard <laughs> some days i want to scream today was one of them <laughs> uh you know, I am lucky to have a person that helps drive. Mm -hmm. So it's about the only, you know, luck out of that. Like a nanny or? It's not like, really a nanny. Uh, it's like a good friend of mine. Uh, who helps you drive the kids around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, thank God because yeah. I have no family here and it's rough. <laughs> yeah. And you're a single mom. I am. And you have four kids. Mm -hmm. Are well, they one of them's out of the house. Okay. Yeah. And the other one, she pretty much does her own thing you know, she works and goes to school so mm -hmm. she's pretty self-efficient it's the other two that are you know yeah yeah so yeah i have one <laughs> yeah and she's three Ugh. and oh, i have they say terrible twos but threes is like <laughs> the devil was th threes were harder oh, for you <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yes. it's just it's just so much no mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. such a, everything and it's like you have to pick and their your energy level is just through the roof oh, I'm like, can I just have a little bit of whatever is going on? I know. Or can you just like, yeah, can you just I go know. read a book? <laughs> like, <laughs> do you really like want to play hide and seek right now? It's 7 a.m. I know, right? Like, I have mommy didn't finish her coffee yet. Like, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's rough. But they're a blessing. Oh, yeah. For yeah. sure. They keep me on my toes. Yeah. And they keep me going, honestly. If I didn't have kids, I would be either dead or on a yacht somewhere in Greece. <laughs> I like how those are like two the completely different <laughs> extremes. Are, but that is it. You would either be dead or like really happy and free and rich. Yes. So true. <laughs> so they keep me on point. <laughs> they keep you off of your yacht in Greece is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, for now, anyways. <laughs> um in 2019, you said in an interview that you saw yourself settle back in Indiana within 10 years. Is that still on your radar for 2029? I don't know if settled is a good word, but I did buy my first um, investment property okay. on my block. I kind of want to buy up as much as I can on my block. <laughs> this is in Indiana? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just want to like help uh, give back to my community a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, do something to better it instead of because I say like I used to say I hate this place I've got to get out of here you know it's so small there's nothing here you mm -hmm. know but at the end of the day it gave me everything that I needed to yeah. come out here and do what I needed to do so that's yeah. really wrong of me to say so now I feel like you know it's not their fault a lot of people can't get out like that I didn't, they don't have the opportunity yeah I was lucky to have my parents help me with my kids and that's it so it was a blessing yeah uh but most people don't have that and they it's harder for them to get out so it's I feel bad so I want to try to like bring something back you know yeah or help fix up stuff or give back to the community so it's interesting that you say that because I find that every time you know I grew up in LA so yeah I've always been here my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, but the older I get, and now that I have a kid, like I find myself wanting to leave the city, like a city that I always yeah. was so happy I lived in and I couldn't imagine ever leaving and everything else is so boring. And I'm so glad I don't live in a small town yeah. and big cities where it's at and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And now like, you know, like I just went to Portland to go visit my sister um, with my husband and my daughter a couple weeks ago. I heard it's beautiful there. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we actually stayed in, in Washington, when we were there and would drive into Portland to see my sister. But it was mm -hmm. just like we stayed in um, um, Camas, the small little community with this small little like town square, probably mm -hmm. no more than like 15 shops. And I was like, this is so nice. Yeah. You know, and it was like a and it was a community. We went to this one. Um, there was like this uh, little place that had a bunch of like food trucks. Um, and that was part of like this like kind of center and then there was a bar and they had like line dancing on Thursday night and there was That's all these fun. people there doing line dancing Yeah, and I'm not into country and you would 
you couldn't catch me dead line dancing. <laughs> really? No. But I was watching it and I was like, this is really cool. Like yeah. these people have like, you know, this something. community and something to do yeah. and everyone's here. And like, you know, in LA, everybody's so worried about what the other person thinks of them yeah. and how they look and that kind yeah. of thing. Like you, you wouldn't have that in LA. No. There was, these people were just like having fun. I look homeless when I go home, <laughs> literally. And this I shouldn't say this, but I'd be lucky to shower like every – <laughs> every other day or two days i'm just like ah who cares yeah <laughs> you know yeah so um i i do find now i'm like i I'm kind of i always think about moving to like a smaller town or mm. a smaller place where like you know my daughter would have a sense of mm-hmm. community there's just isn't really much of that here but yeah i i don't see myself ever leaving this place yeah it's hard when you get access to everything mm-hmm. like because i say that too i'm like i don't know if i could actually live there i mean not anytime soon anyways because you don't have access to stuff like like when I fly in I drive an hour and a half just to get home from the airport you know so it's like and it's like no traffic you know I mean it's a solid hour and a half period yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) you know so it's like I don't know it's hard when you get spoiled I guess you should say and then have to go smaller yeah but yeah yeah Yeah. definitely miss home a little bit here and there (laughs) how often do you go back I try to go back at least two, three times a year. Okay. Yeah. Like you go back sh- for the holidays? I do, usually. Yeah. Like Thanksgiving, I usually stay here because mm-hmm. it's just so short. Yeah. But um, Christmas, I usually always go home. So, yeah. Yeah. And they stay there for like a couple weeks. So, that sounds nice. Yeah. That is. Well, Rachel, thank you so much for coming on today. Yeah, thank it was you such for a having pleasure. Me. Yes. Thank you. And then, could you tell everyone, uh, this is your camera right here, oh, okay. um, where they can find you online, all your links and all that stuff? Yeah. Um, so, Twitter, Rachel Cavalli, Instagram, official Rachel Cavalli, and OnlyFans.com slash Rachel Cavalli. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter or X, whatever. <laughs> I'm still on TikTok. They haven't kicked me off yet. Um, and of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And if you want to get access to more bonus content from this podcast, watch the live streams. Of course, join my Patreon, patreon.com slash Holly Randall and filtered hollylinks.com for links to all of my social media platforms. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week.